I'm George and welcome back to part two of this series as we build our light shadow rocket. If you want to see how we built the pressure chamber, just click up here and uh, let's have a look at how we finish off the rest of the rocket. So where we left off last week, we needed to do a pressure test on the pressure chamber. So we fill it full of water and then we elevate the end so that we don't get water coming back down the air hose. Then we stand it up and top it off with a little bit more water to reduce any air pockets. We're using the launcher as the actual connection to the pressure chamber. And the diagonal braces just stop the launcher from falling over. And here we've pressurized it to 205 psi. We didn't want to go any higher because we didn't want to blow it up. Uh, so we don't know what the upper limit is of the pressure chamber yet. And that held up fine without any leaks. And now we're just depressurizing it. Okay, let's have a look how the nose cone's made. We start off like with the tail cone with a series of blocks of wood glued together. And then we attach this lathe adapter that lets us hold it. And first we turn it down to the right diameter. And then we start shaping the nose cone. And doing some fine work with the file. And then finally with some sandpaper. Now before we take it off we usually fill it with a little bit of putty and then sand it again. So you get a nice smooth finish. And so now we're cutting out the glass for the nose cone. And we always do a bias cut on this because these are uh, much easier to form that way. And the roller cutter comes in very useful for doing this sort of work. Now we're only using eight gauze for the nose cone of the 200 GSM cloth. And then finally we finish it off with the 85 GSM cloth again for a nicer finish. So this technique is identical to what we used for the tail cone and the forward closure. And you can see that in part one of the series. So then again, we're pulling out the balloon and then we just slide it off the plug. Now it's ready to be trimmed and sanded. So we use a bit of wet and dry and we give it a nice sand until it's nice and smooth. And the water helps keep the dust down. Then we need to machine the very tip of the nose cone and that's just made out of a bit of acrylic. First we do a rough shaping with a knife and then we finish it off by hand. And here it is, and glued into place. Next, let's have a look at the parachute bracket. First, we make a coupler out of the same mandrel material that was used for the main body tube. Then we cut this small reinforcing ring. And eventually these two will get glued together. Now we take a bit of flat bar carbon fiber, and that's about 12 by two millimeters and we cut off two pieces of this. Then we use a six millimeter round bar carbon fiber as well for the horizontal bar. And that all gets glued together and we're using a couple of screws through those holes just to keep it nice and strong. And here it is when it's finished. It's all glued together with the bulkhead. And then we attach it to the nose cone and we tap some holes so that we can detach the nose cone and insert a payload if we need to. And we're just using M3 screws for that. Okay, next we need to make the payload bay tube. And again, we're using 200 GSM cloth for that. 
and the construction technique is identical to the main pressure chamber. So we start off with the baking paper and wrap it tightly around the mandrel. And that gets secured with tape. And then we start pouring and rolling epoxy with the cloth on top of that as well. Now the payload bait tube doesn't have to be as strong because it's not pressurized. So it has one less wrap which makes it a little bit lighter. Then when it's all laid up, we stick it on the rotisserie, turn on the heat lamps, and let that go for a couple of hours. And the next day when it's cured, we can pull it off the mandrel. And then again, we just pull the baking paper out from inside the tube. Now, after it's been trimmed, we drill some holes. These holes will locate the rubber bands. And the rubber bands are used for the ejection mechanism. So here we've got the payload bay tube sitting on top of the alignment jig, and it's connected to the pressure chamber and we're drilling and tapping holes as we go where the two will join and we're using 10 m3 screws these will be countersunk eventually and then we cut some access holes to the electronics switches server motor and that sort of thing and a dremel comes in very useful And finally we give it a sand so it's ready for painting. Now let's have a look how we make the fins. Well, first thing we do is we model the rocket in open rocket so that we put in all of the weights and sizes. And then we can shape the fins to give us, um, for this rocket, about four calibers uh, of stability. Um, because it's a water rocket and it can potentially fly on bigger eye motors, uh, we wanted to make sure that uh, it always remained stable, even with a heavier load towards the back of the rocket. And after we've printed the template, we mark it out on some G10 fiberglass. And then start cutting out those shapes. And we don't really worry about beveling the edges because the fiberglass is fairly thin, so we just take off the sharp edge of the corner. Now here we're making the fin alignment jig out of four brackets. Uh, these are just aluminium L brackets. And the brackets are spaced with bits of the fin material in between them and a couple of sheets of paper just to give it a slight bit of clearance. Now here we're preparing the surface for gluing and we're using 24 hour epoxy for that. And so we sand both the rocket and the fins. And the fin alignment jig just sits on top of the rocket. And then this is how the fin fits in. And so we're just tacking the fin on with the epoxy. The fillets will come later. Now we carefully slide it in, making sure we don't touch anything with the glue. And then we put on a couple of clamps just to make sure it doesn't slide off. And we leave that overnight.
and this is after we've glued on the last fin, we take off the clamps. And pull out the alignment jig. So next we remove the seam with a file and then sand the rocket. And we vacuum up all the dust. Now we mask off the area for the fin fillets. Now we've had to switch to masking tape because the electrical tape just doesn't stick to the fiberglass. It's fine on the fins though. Now we're using this epi glue, wonderful stuff for fins. It's kind of a gel epoxy, you could call it. So we lay it into the fillet and then we're just using a piece of PVC pipe to actually shape the fillet to give it a nice curve. And depending on the size of the PVC pipe, you can get different curvatures. Now the best part about epi glue is you can do those two fins, flip it over and that glue won't sag. The next thing we do is while the glue is still wet, we remove the masking tape, which allows the corners to round themselves off where the tape is. So it just prevents you having a sharp edge right there. And we'll leave that to dry overnight. Okay, so let's have a look at the rail buttons. Those are just machined up out of a bit of nylon. And they're screwed to these uh, metal brackets. And more epoxy. And these are just surface mounted. Obviously we can't put through hole buttons because it's a pressure chamber. Then we add a strip of fiberglass over the top of that just to make it all nice and secure. And then we apply more glue and finally wrap it with tape. This gives it a nice smooth finish. And again, we let this dry overnight. And here it is the next day with the tape removed. Uh, it's kind of hard to see, but there's a nice smooth bevel over the top of that. Okay, so now we mask off the fins the next day, ready for painting. And then we do some final sanding around those rail buttons, dust it all down. And we give the fillets a bit of a sand too. So we're using this acrylic spray putty to help fill in all of the little divots that might have been left behind from the fiberglassing. So we give this probably five or six coats until it's all nicely thick and built up. And here it is. And then we do the nose cone and the payload bays as well. And the next step is to sand most of that putty off again. And that helps create a really smooth finish on the outside of the rocket. Now we're using this Dulux Duramax uh, spray paint. It's fast drying and it's quite hard wearing too. Now it's a bit windy this day. And because we were running short on time, here we're doing some spray painting at night. And the next day we can remove all the masking tape.
and here are the airframes ready to have some vinyl decals put on. A big thank you to Sasha from Victoria who made these up for us. And now it's time for the electronics. So we're actually using a part of the motor mount tube that we made up originally as the central core of the electronics package. Uh, then we cut off a couple of reinforcing rings. This will actually attach it to the main payload bay tube. Now we make a couple of them and fit them inside each other so that because these will have threads cut into them and the PVC pipe itself is fairly thin so we want to have a, a thicker cross section. And here the priming fluids going on of the PVC cement. and then we glue it together. Now we need to make up some more bulkheads and these are just made out of plywood. And then the PVC ring gets glued to one of them and the fiberglass tube gets glued to the other. Then we drill out some holes and these holes will mount the actual servo motor. And that's just an access hole for the leads that come out of the servo motor. So here it is fitted and that's just basically screwed in. Now we're using a bigger servo motor in this rocket because there'll be greater forces um, pulling on it. And then that just gets epoxied to the top bulkhead. And we solder up the electronics. Now for the full details of the electronics, you can go have a look at our website. Um, it's got the full circuit diagrams if you're interested. So here it is all mounted inside a little pet plastic pockets and finally attached to the central core. Now those plastic pockets allow us to remove those components easily and reuse them on other rockets and that whole plastic sleeve can be unbolted and taken off. So here we've got the servo timer, the strato logger and a couple of sets of batteries and the servo motor. Now here is the nose cone assembly with the parachute bracket and this loop of wire just connects to the servo motor. That's what holds the whole thing in place. Now a parachute fits very loosely in there so that when it comes out of the rocket it's just free to fall out. Now here is the payload bay tube with the rubber bands fitted and that's exactly the same as Dark Shadow. So we can slide the electronics in like this uh, and align it to the holes. And those just get screwed in with the M3 screws. And so here's the whole assembly with the shock cord attached to the nose cone and to the parachute. And here we're ready to do a test. We can connect the strato logger directly to the computer and we can actually fire the uh, output channel. So we're going to do that. Three, two, one. And 
Here is how the parachute would have fallen out. And then the whole payload bay gets screwed onto the rest of the rocket. And here it is all assembled. So that's the rocket ready for flight. Thanks for watching. And if you want to see it in action, just click on one of these videos and uh, we'll see you next time.